All right, friends and neighbors, time for another networking video. It's uh, actually bonus video time because I'm going to try to clear up uh, a couple of questions that some folks had for me. And, uh, and it's all about layer two and layer three addressing. So to begin with, what we have to remember is that both layer two and layer three have unicast, multicast, and broadcast addresses. When we're talking about layer two, of course, we're talking about MAC addresses. And when we're talking about layer three, we're talking about IPv4 or IPv6 addresses. But no matter what you're talking about, you have to worry about these three kinds of addressing. We'll talk a little bit about IPv6 later on, but um, that's an important idea. Now, the other important idea is that the, that the addresses go together. Now, almost always what that means is that if something's happening at layer three, in terms of unicast, broadcast, or multicast, it's also happening at layer two. But it doesn't always work the other way around because a lot of layer two processes don't have a layer three addressing. So spanning tree is an example. There's no layer three addressing for spanning tree. It's just layer two. So in that case, we wouldn't see the tie. But if you've got multicast, broadcast, or unicast at layer three, guarantee you've got it at layer, layer two as well. So it's an important idea to, to distinguish between these kinds of addresses at layer two and layer three, but also recognize that they go together. All right, so let's remind ourselves about the different kinds of addresses. First, multicast, this is for a group of nodes. So not just you or not everybody, but a collection of nodes for whatever reason. It might be a protocol. It might be that you've done PIM and you're, you've got a collection of nodes that are interested in a stream or a particular protocol but you've got just a collection of nodes uh, in mind. So at layer two, we'll be talking about a particular MAC address. So a lot of protocols have a very particular multicast MAC address uh, that they're worried about. And so at layer two, those multicast MAC addresses begin with zero, one. Now, this is where it gets confusing because I'm gonna say IPv4, and that's a reference to layer three, but we're talking about what goes on at the layer two frame. So, if we are on an IPv4 network and we're talking about multicast traffic, then we're talking about a range of addresses that go from 224 to 239 at the beginning, the first octet. But what goes on at the, the MAC address is that the source will be a unicast, and that's another important idea, always, 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 your source MAC addresses and your source IP addresses will be unicast the destination will begin with zero one. So multicast MAC addresses begin with zero one. If we're talking about IPv6, then IPv6 multicast layer three addresses begin with FF, FF01, FF02. But when we pack that into a layer two frame, then the MAC address will begin with 3333. So, that's the distinction and that's how they, they operate together. And remember that we're talking about um, MAC addresses or IP addresses that go to a particular set of nodes. Now broadcast is a little bit different. Broadcast is for everybody. And so if you have a broadcast MAC address that's all Fs, that's a broadcast, right? So that means that switches will look at that and say, oh, I'm gonna send this everywhere. Now. We can have broadcast layer two addressing that doesn't have anything to do with broadcast layer three because there are some processes that exist only at layer two. ARP is a really good example. ARP has IP addresses in the message, but it doesn't have an IP header. So we're not using broadcast layer three addressing, but we are gonna use broadcast layer two. Now, if you're doing something that's broadcast at layer three. So in the case of IPv4, you'll be doing a limited broadcast or a directed broadcast. It's a guarantee that that's gonna be put inside a broadcast frame. Unicast source, uh, broadcast destination. There's no broadcast in IPv6. So here are a couple of uh, broadcast and multicast examples. We'll take the top one first. We can see that here is our unicast source IP address, and here is our multicast destination. It is a unicast source MAC, but a multicast destination. 
Here's an IPv6 example. This is what a multicast address would look like an example. This happens to be a link local unicast source um, IP address. And there's the unicast source MAC, of course, but here is an IPv6 packet inside a multicast address frame in the destination. So 01-3333. And it's weird, right? When you think about it, we're talking about MAC addresses, but it makes a difference whether or not you're on an IPv4 or an IPv6 network. And here is an example in IPv4 broadcasting. So we've got a broadcast at layer three, unicast source again, but we've got a broadcast MAC address as the destination, all Fs with a unicast source. So that's multicast and broadcast. Well, let's talk about unicast or sometimes referred to as point to point because there's just two nodes that are involved in the conversation. If we're talking about unicast MAC addresses, then historically we used to say, oh, those are going to begin with 00. zero. And that was true for a long, long time, but we began to run out of vendor IDs, right? The first three MAC address, or the first three bytes in a MAC address of the vendor code. So today you'll see any value there in the first octet, as long as it's not one of the broadcast or multicast patterns. And remember that all source addresses are, are unicast. And then we can also see unicast in the destination. Now in IP addressing, whether we're talking about IPv6 or IPv4, it's anything but the broadcast or multicast pattern. So uh, we're not going to see you know, 255s at, um, at layer 3 in this case. We're not going to see things that begin with 224 or um, uh, to 239. But we've also got a couple of other patterns that we're going to add here. So 127, uh, it's technically, I suppose, uh, a unicast, but we don't see that on the network very often. And while all zeros is technically a unicast address because hosts use it, everybody also uses it. So you don't assign this to somebody. And then in IPv6, we have two flavors of unicast address, and that would include the global unicast addresses and then the link local. But that's a whole IPv6 topic. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention something here uh, that because it just popped into my head as I was talking about broadcast. The pattern that we see in broadcast a lot is 255. And if we're talking about limited broadcast, 255, 255, 255, 255, we always identify that as a as a broadcast. But what we have to be a little bit careful with is in the directed broadcasts and just seeing that last octet. So the example that I gave was 172.16.255.255. And so that would be a directed broadcast at the 172.16 network. And maybe we'll go back and take a look at that real quick. So here we go. There's 172.16. And that would be that directed broadcast. But that doesn't take into account subnetting or supernetting. So the minute you subnet or supernet, what we would identify as a directed broadcast might actually be different. And so I will just say that, we'll just note that. And if you're totally confused by what I just said, go take a look at the videos on masking that I did to identify what the broadcast address might be for a, uh, a subnetted or supernetted uh, network address. And here are some examples of unicast combinations. So in the top one, we can see that we've got a unicast to unicast conversation. And at layer two, it is also unicast to unicast. Now in this case, we've got the historical values of zero, zero in the first octet of the MAC address. The next packet down shows that it's a unicast to unicast conversation again at layer three, but take a look at the MAC addresses. These begin with some pattern that's completely different. So not 00, zero not FF, uh, not 01, not 33. But the, so that identifies these as, as being unicast as well. And because this is kind of wasteful when you think about it. So in the bottom, we've got an example of an IPv6 uh, unicast message. In this case, we're talking about link local addressing. So there's a link local address going to another link local address. This is just an IPv6 ping. And we can see, of course, at layer two, we've got unicast messaging as well. Nothing crazy going on there. So that's our unicast. So the behavior in IPv6 and IPv4 is very similar. Cool, there we have it. Layer two and layer three addressing. What we have to remember is that at both layers, 
we've got unicast, broadcast, and multicast, unless we're talking about IPv6, in which case there's no broadcast. The other thing that we have to remember is that layer three and layer two addresses are tied together. So what goes on at layer three happens at layer two, but that's not always the same when we talk about starting at layer two because there's not always a layer three address involved at all. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Like and subscribe if I provided some illumination. And I'm also starting that new music channel, so let me know what you think about that out there. And whether you're talking about layer two or layer three, IPv4 or IPv6, may those packets always reach those destinations.